At 33 years old, with a successful small business under my belt, I never expected to find myself in the situation I'm about to share. My wife, seven years my junior at 27, and I tied the knot six months ago after a whirlwind romance that started online. We quickly went from dating to a serious relationship and then to marriage. I've always considered myself a bit of a nerd, so when an attractive woman showed interest in me, expressing love and affection, I was over the moon. I would have done anything for her, and she knew it. Running my own business meant a lot of travel and long hours, so I was hardly ever home during the weekdays. Despite my busy schedule, I was doing quite well financially, making $150,000 a year before taxes. My wife, on the other hand, didn't work. She depended entirely on me for her livelihood. I noticed she was somewhat lazy, rarely engaging in housework or cooking, but I didn't think much of it at the time. I believed I had played a role in enabling her behavior. Six months into our marriage, she dropped a bombshell. She was pregnant. I was out of town at the time, but I immediately rushed back to be with her. We went to a clinic the next day, where they confirmed she was two months pregnant. A week later, I came home early from the office to pick up something I needed for work. Her car was in the garage, so I knew she was home. But as I walked towards our bedroom, the unmistakable sounds of intimacy grew louder. The door was open, and there she was, with another man. Her immediate response was, it's not what it looks like but the scene before me was unmistakable. The shock was overwhelming. I had been mentally preparing to become a father, building my life around her, and ensuring her comfort. And yet, there she was, betraying me in our own bedroom, two months pregnant. I remember feeling numb as I walked away from the scene. She tried to convince me that I hadn't seen what I clearly had, as if I were oblivious or foolish. I managed to collect myself enough to grab what I needed and leave the house. Before leaving, I told her she should be gone by the time I returned. The drive back to work was a blur. My mind was reeling with the betrayal and the realization that her declarations of love were all lies. My absence due to work seemed to have provided her the opportunity to lead this double life. It felt like a well-played act on her part, and I was the unsuspecting audience. She would have had me support her through the pregnancy and potentially raise another man's child my wife's relentless attempts to reach me through calls and voice messages went unanswered. Upon reaching my office, I contacted a trusted friend, asking him to check on my house. After a couple of hours, he confirmed that my wife had left, taking only her essentials. My next step was to secure my home. I went to Home Depot and changed all the locks to ensure she couldn't return unannounced. I learned she was staying with her family, so I took the necessary legal steps. My lawyer swiftly served her divorce papers. His advice was crucial. He instructed me to keep quiet and avoid engaging with her family or friends. If mutual friends brought up the divorce, I was to remain polite but non-committal. He emphasized that any reactions from my end could be used against me in the proceedings. His guidance was invaluable, ensuring I didn't inadvertently escalate the situation or provide her side with any ammunition. Following his advice, we arranged for my wife to collect the rest of her belongings. I avoided direct contact by having my friend oversee the process. In retaliation, my wife hired a divorce lawyer and demanded a staggering $2,000 a month in alimony for five years, claiming the unborn child was mine and asserting her need for financial support and continued health insurance coverage. When her alimony demands reached me through my attorney, I was thankful he had been the first to review them. His reassurance that her demands were unrealistic helped me maintain my composure. While I was willing to divide the assets acquired during our marriage, I was adamant about not rewarding her infidelity with prolonged financial support or taking responsibility for a child that likely wasn't mine. My attorney was concerned about the potential bias in the court system, often favoring the woman in such cases. He warned that her lawyer might try to portray me as an enabler, suggesting that my financial support and absence due to work somehow justified her affair. The revelation of my wife's infidelity, coupled with my intense work schedule, created a complex situation for the divorce proceedings. My job had always been demanding, requiring me to work 60 to 80 hours a week. This workload wasn't new. I had been managing these hours for over three years, even before we were married. The irony was that if I hadn't discovered her betrayal, she might have become more emboldened in her actions over time. 
My attorney, recognizing the need for concrete evidence of infidelity to strengthen my case, advised hiring a private investigator. He facilitated this, although the costs, amounting to $6,200, were borne by me. The private investigator's thoroughness was remarkable. He not only focused on gathering evidence against my wife but also conducted a background check on me to ensure there were no hidden affairs on my part. This comprehensive approach was crucial, as proving my wife's infidelity was key to avoiding prolonged alimony payments, which could have lasted until she remarried, a scenario becoming increasingly rare. Unfortunately, in the initial phase of our separation, I overlooked canceling a credit card that my wife had access to. She exploited this, running up charges of around $5,000 in a single evening with her lover. This oversight was a result of my transition to a cash-only lifestyle, a change I had made as my business prospered. The private investigator's findings were damning. He uncovered that my wife's infidelity wasn't just a one-time incident but a pattern that had persisted throughout our marriage and even before. He managed to identify and contact two of her previous partners, both of whom were willing to provide affidavits. Their testimonies painted a clear picture. My wife had meticulously planned her affairs to coincide with my work schedule. She maintained a strict rule with her lovers, no calls or texts unless she initiated them. This cautious approach ensured her activities remained hidden, especially during weekends when I was more likely to be home. The role of the private investigator in my divorce case was nothing short of crucial. He managed to track down individuals from my wife's past, including two who were willing to provide sworn statements about her infidelity. These statements indicated that not only did she cheat during our marriage, but she also took deliberate steps to keep her actions hidden from me. This evidence was vital in challenging the typical alimony expectations in divorce cases. Alimony, in certain situations, is entirely justified. For instance, in long-term marriages where one spouse earns significantly more than the other, or in cases where one partner sacrifices career opportunities to support the family, alimony helps to mitigate the financial disparities post-divorce. However, in my case, where my wife's infidelity was the primary cause of our separation, I couldn't fathom providing financial support to reward her deceit. The private investigator's comprehensive work included photographing my wife with various men, effectively documenting her ongoing unfaithfulness. Although these photos weren't strictly necessary for the case, they helped establish a pattern of behavior. His ability to secure statements from two of her former partners was pivotal. They confirmed her affair both during and before our marriage and detailed the extent of her deception, such as instructing them not to contact her on weekends or when I was home. About a month after our separation, the investigator uncovered that she had engaged in reckless behavior at a club, further complicating her image in the case. I maintained no contact with her during this period, but her family frequently reached out to me, often harassing me. Even her father called, accusing me of destroying his daughter's life. It was only after I had my lawyer send him the compiled evidence from the investigator that he understood the reality of the situation and apologized. In court, proving my wife's infidelity was essential to avoid unjust alimony demands. My lawyer emphasized that the court often favors women, especially in cases involving children. Therefore, our strategy was to demonstrate conclusively that her actions were the sole reason for the divorce. This approach aimed to either significantly reduce or completely eliminate any alimony payments. The combined efforts of the private investigator and my attorney were instrumental in presenting a compelling case. Their expertise in gathering and legally formatting the evidence for the hearing was a crucial factor in the favorable outcome of my divorce. Without their diligence and strategic planning, the situation could have been vastly different. The role of the private investigator in my divorce was crucial. Not only did he uncover the extent of my wife's infidelity, but he also found invaluable information from people she had wronged. This evidence played a significant role in the outcome of the divorce proceedings. While I often joke about lawyers, in this case, their expertise was invaluable. The private investigator, especially, was worth his weight in gold, revealing aspects of my wife's behavior I had been completely unaware of. Financially, I was in a strong position, earning around $150,000 before taxes at the time, which has since increased to $250,000. This income allowed me to absorb the costs of the divorce without seeking compensation for the credit card debts my wife racked up. Legally, 
I was responsible for those charges since I had not cancelled the cards. Pursuing reimbursement from her seemed futile. I doubted I'd ever see that money. My priority was to extricate myself from the marriage as swiftly and completely as possible. I was determined not to pay the proposed alimony of $2,000 a month for approximately five years, a figure my attorney indicated was the average. Accepting this would have felt like condoning her behavior and financially supporting it further. Instead, I was willing to bear the cost of the divorce and the loss of various items we had acquired together, including wedding gifts and personal purchases. I wanted to remove all reminders of our failed marriage from my life. The divorce process in California took six months and one day to complete, though I've heard it's now around six weeks if uncontested. Despite the emotional toll, I didn't seek sympathy but rather shared my experience in the hope that it might help others recognize warning signs that I missed. Reflecting on the past, there are moments I now see as red flags that I was too blind to notice at the time. I emerged from the divorce with a renewed focus on working hard for myself, rather than for us as a couple. This shift allowed me more personal time and, ultimately, helped me to recover from the emotional impact of the divorce. The cost of my attorney, about $12,000, was a small price to pay compared to the potential five years of alimony payments. Reflecting on my divorce saga, it became clear how the final stages unfolded. After the judge reviewed all the evidence, including the findings from the private investigator and the sworn statements from her former lovers, my wife's request for $2,000 monthly alimony was denied. Post-divorce, I've had no interaction with her but I've been informed she relocated to Arizona. She even tried to fraudulently use my name for credit applications in the state. Deep down, I am certain the pregnancy was not mine. It seems evident now that she intended for me to raise another man's child under the guise of our marriage. It's a harsh reality to accept, but I have come to terms with it. The journey through the divorce was emotionally taxing. The more I reflect, the more I realize she never truly loved me. I was simply a convenient option, a meal ticket for her. In hindsight, I see how I inadvertently facilitated her deceit with my continuous absence due to work commitments and my exhaustion during the rare times I was home. This lifestyle provided her the perfect cover to carry out her affairs. However, I must admit that despite being a victim of her deceit, I played a part in creating the environment that allowed it to happen. Nevertheless, I believe that her living with the knowledge of what she lost, and witnessing my continued success and happiness, is a greater punishment than any immediate, drastic reaction I could have had upon discovering her betrayal. It's a subtle yet profound form of vindication for me. Some have opined that I should have reacted more forcefully upon catching them in the act. But looking back, I am grateful for the restraint I showed. Engaging in a physical altercation would only have escalated the situation, potentially leading to legal complications for me. It was a decision that saved me from further anguish and legal trouble. The aftermath of the divorce was a period of intense reflection and growth. I've since focused on expanding my business and increasing my income. I've moved on from the betrayal and grown stronger from the experience. The STD test coming back negative was a significant relief amidst the chaos. It was a reminder of how things could have been much worse. In the end, this experience, as painful as it was, has taught me valuable life lessons about trust, love, and the importance of being present in a relationship. It's a reminder of how crucial it is to not only provide materially but also to be emotionally and physically present for your partner. Thank you for taking the time to follow my story.